Hello and welcome back to the channel and welcome to another solar based video. So with this one I just wanted to put together a bit of a quick kind of overview and review of our experience over winter. Um, we're now in March or the end of March and since I've been solar installed back in August last year we've not actually seen that much benefit from it and I wanted to share kind of our experience in this video and whether solar is actually worth it for the winter months and that's what we're going to get into uh, in today's video. So just to give a bit of an overview of what we had installed back in August last year, um, we had 20 400 watt um, per light solar panels fitted, we had um, a 5 kilowatt inverter from Solar Edge, we had a 9.7 usable capacity kilowatt um, Solar Edge battery to create a bit of an um, ecosystem from Solar Edge. Um, now, the solar panels was paired, or each solar panel had um, an opt Solar Edge optimizer on it uh, that allowed to adapt each panel independently, fault find independently, uh, and also benefit from any shading um, so it doesn't affect the rest of the array. Now, we had eight panels on a south facing roof, slightly lower being on our garage. Um, but then we had 12 on the rear of the house, bang on west facing, um, which are much higher and capture the sun to, towards the end of the day. Now, in August, September, when we had these installed, the solar panels were producing upwards of 40 kilowatts per day. Now, as we went into October, this began to kind of degrade and then become unusable in November. December and January as you can see from the graph. Now what I've got here on my iPad and I'll put it the same on the screen so since having them installed what to try and really document uh, the performance of solar panels and whether they're worthwhile to to kind of you guys uh, and ourselves because this is a trial for us as well. Um, I have recorded every single month um, what our usage is, what our export is, what our home consumption is um, everything to do um, around solar panels. Now, on the graph you can see here, I've done this as a percentage of our consumption coming from solar um, and from the sun. Um, and this is a combination of our system. So you've got a battery that's supporting that. Now in August, you can see, um, oh, actually one other thing. So. I have an electric car and um, it's actually going soon and not for any bad reason but what I've done is I've separated out any electric vehicle charging to give us a percentage um, of how much of our consumption has come from solar um, with an EV and without an EV. So. We've split it in, I've split it into two columns, which you can see on the screen now, um, and I've just got the iPad just to uh, guide me through it because there's a lot of figures um, and I can't remember them. So, as you can see, um, we'll, we'll go through each one uh, month by month. So at the bottom, you've got August. That's when we have the system installed. Now, with an EV, so mind you, my electric car does circa 30,000 mile a year. So that's a lot of charging from home. Our consumption, 57% of it came from the sun. So that's the solar power, you know, through the panels into the battery and then the car being on charge when working from home or uh, days when we are in the house. Now, if we, if we remove that from um, these figures and just base it on the house, we produce 201% of what we consume. So doubled um, our requirements, if you like. Now, as the months go on, it starts to degrade. Now, September, we were on holiday for two weeks, and then October, it starts degrading. But then it took a real drop in November, December time. So we've got, without an EV, 22% of um, our power uh, came from uh, solar. December, it were down to 17%. And I expect it to drop even further. But what we were seeing is, Come January, February, this starts to pick up again. So as you can see, 20, January 27% and in February 42% um, came uh, from solar. Now, I've not done the figures for March because I don't have them yet, but 
what I am seeing is I think currently um, what we on we're on the 25th of March now um, we are at about 300 kilowatt hours now that's nearly our consumption before we had a, an EV for the month so we're already in March and we're produce we're kind of covering um, or we're producing enough to cover our house base kind of usage so it's actually pretty good and we've only had kind of three months lull maybe four months where it's not really producing much and I'll touch on another point with that with the batteries shortly so that's without an EV so you've got you know you're down to as low as 17% and um, not great not really going to change your life not going to save loads of money and um, but then with an EV it's actually better than I expected so it went right down to seven and a half percent coming um, from solar now it's not great but you make up for it in the summer months and that's kind of the message to get across now if we forget about the EV and we just look at the percentages of um, how much solar produced uh, in comparison to to our home usage now in winter and you've got to have a battery for this now you know you've got shorter days you've got darker you know cloudier days you've got rain you've got snow whatever it is um, that's going to affect the production of solar now what we did with our 10 kilowatt battery or 9.7 kilowatt batteries <clears throat> we started to charge this up overnight now because I have an EV, um, but there is tariffs out there that will allow you to do this, I believe still, is we have a cheaper rate overnight. So in the daytime, our rate was 40p per kilowatt, which is astronomical and not really viable. Um, this That would get, that was circuit giving us uh, about a bill of around 200 pound a month uh, based on our usage without an electric car. What we were doing is charging this battery up um, overnight during the cheap hour window, which was one o'clock in the morning till 4 a.m. And that would give us a 10 p a kilowatt um, charge. So a 10 kilowatt battery at 10 p, you know, it's costing you a pound uh, to charge the battery up fully. Um, that took around two hours to do. Um, so if you, reached, if you compare that down to a day rate, if we did not have a battery, um, I think the the government contribution did it to 34p a kilowatt. So to charge your battery up overnight or to charge it up generally anyway would have cost you £3.40. Now because we had a battery, we had, because we had a, a cheap overnight rate, we could charge that for less than a pound. You know, that's a third of the cost of your saving. So then do that into your monthly uh, budget. We were saving circa £3 per day hundred pound a month um that equates so so although the solar is not powering anything over the winter um we're still making savings by taking taking advantage of the cheap overnight rates um and maximizing that for then so 10 kilowatts was about enough for us to run our house during the day so as you can see uh, from the figures and, and what i'm trying to produce is kind of facts um there's a lot of myths behind uh, having a solar PV system and don't get me wrong it's not cheap um, and if you check out some of my older videos I've kind of explained exactly you know what it's cost us to have this installed and to be honest I've had no benefit from actual solar production we've benefited from the battery side of things more than we have um, the sun um, side of it so as we move into March now you know in April um, I'm estimating that March will will, will cover probably a hundred and 20% maybe of our house demand um, and then if we're going to April, May, June, July that's just going to astronomical sort of incline up um, to production where we're probably going to be producing 200, 250% more than the house actually needs. As mentioned uh, my electric car is going due to changing jobs so um, I won't reap the rewards of charging and having kind of free mileage um, so what we are doing now is looking at other uh, tariffs which I think I'll cover in another video um, because we've just joined a new tariff with Octopus that gives us fantastic exporting rates so we'll see how that goes but overall you know we, we've had it six months um, I 
I'm actually really impressed with what it's done um, as a package with the battery um, with the solar you know we, we got a couple of months of good solar we've had winter with the battery being able to charge it saving circa three pound per day um, you know 90 pound a month that is where it's at and that's kind of my thought process with with this whole changing lifestyle that we're all doing that you know it's about managing it and it's about um reducing your bills as much as possible and maximizing efficiency with um how you manage your situation you know so, such as where we charge the battery overnight now as we've gone into march now we've actually reduced our charging right down to only an hour um overnight just to top up for in the morning but during the day now we're getting much brighter days as you can probably see the sun's beaming my uh, face so um that's topping us up so we're a hundred percent by the end of the day and then we've also added now a hot water diverter which again i'll cover in another video so yes i do think um solar is worthwhile even for the winter months um but with a battery um as i've said in previous videos i think it comes as a system that i don't feel solar on its own is worthwhile um but when you compare that uh, when you add in a battery it really becomes a system that's very useful um for households and you know if you're out in the day working you can't use the solar so you need the battery just to top up and and put in the bank ready for when you're at home in the evening when it goes dark so yeah really good few months um it's getting better um i was expecting probably you know six months of a downtime but you know we're no more than four months and and it's done really well which i hope i can demonstrate in the graph shown and in the in the figures and the percentages shown so please do give it a thumbs up if um you found this video useful and it's helping you decide whether to go down the route of solar and um, please do drop any comments down below uh, i always try and answer uh, them from my experiences i can only give you facts from what i know um so very controversial topic so um yeah all i want to do is get the message out there of, of our experiences and how it's going so thank you for watching please, please make sure you subscribe for more videos to come of this nature in the near future thanks for watching cheers <laughs>